So we're going to talk about the secrets of plotting, but we're not plotting a murder here. We're plotting a book. So tell me about where you begin. I mean, how about character conflict? Is that important that you get characters who don't get along all the time? Absolutely. In real life, we don't want conflict. But every good story has got to have conflict on almost every single page. In fact, conflict is a vital step of plot structure. It's step number five. I don't know these. I'm an author. I've written books. What's step five? Well, actually, my biggest tip that I give when I go into schools and talk to classes is my seven-step story structure. And this is what got me published. Seven, count them seven. And it's better than beginning, middle, and end, which is a bit too basic. And it's better than something like the Hero's Journey template, which has 18 steps. For a long time, I wanted to write, and I wrote and wrote, but I couldn't write plot, the what happens. And then I came across a set of cassette tapes, an audio course about 25 years ago, about plot structure by a Hollywood screen doctor or script doctor who helps movies yeah he it's movie story structure because when they make a movie they spend millions bazillions of pounds on it or dollars and they want it to be right this guy john truby t-r-u-b-y claimed that every movie has about 22 beats but of those 22 seven are essential for every story and i'll go through them super quick step one your hero has a problem right at the beginning Step two, they desire something, have a desire. They want something that will solve the problem. Step three, there's an opponent. Someone's going to clash with your hero as they go for their desire to solve the problem. That's the beginning of your story. The middle is one step. Your hero has to come up with a plan to defeat the opponent, get the desire, and solve the problem. Now, the plan will take up the middle of a long story, and in a short story, it'll work almost at once. The beginning of the end is the battle. And I often get kids to hold up five fingers, make a fist and say battle. And that's when you have the final clash of the hero, the hero and the opponent. It can be violent, like, you know, swords and heads popping off and blood spurting out or flamethrowers or superheroes. In my, in my book, it's violence. Excellent. Book, but it doesn't violent. have to be violent. And in fact, in our everyday life, we have conflict in our everyday life. And sometimes a battle is just an argument with our best friend or our parents. Who's the that's opponent? That's violent that for me. That's very violent for Step me. Step six, whether your hero wins or loses the battle, they learn something. So I call that knowledge. That's often, we call it the life lesson or the moral of the story. And then the final step, step seven, is your hero either ends up on a higher level than when they started or a lower level. That's just like a happy ending or a mm. sad ending. So you can have a sad ending. So you okay, can. Let's try and fit this. For the first chapter of The Thieves of Ostia. Okay. Okay, please. super quick. Yeah. The first chapter of The Thieves of Ostia, which is the origin story, I introduce Flavia and her three friends, and I introduce Flavia on her own as a detective with a little mini mystery. Someone has stolen her dad's signet ring. She has a problem. What does she want? The missing signet ring. That's her desire. Who's the opponent? As she looks for clues and goes into her inner garden, she sees a magpie in a tree. <sighs> And she thinks she knows magpies like bright, shiny things. And she thinks he's the culprit. She's right. She comes up with a plan. She leaves a sparkly necklace, a silver chain on her dad's desk to see if the magpie will take the bait and fly to his nest and lead her to his nest. The Who's plan the battle works. Next? Sorry. Sorry, it's the battle next. I'm getting The excited. battle is next. And the battle <laughs> is just if she keeps the magpie in sight for the whole time to his nest through the graveyard at the back of her house, she wins the battle, but if the magpie keeps his nest a secret, he wins the battle. Fla Flavia does find the nest and her bait and her dad's ring. And so, and she re she gets the reward, the desire, the thing she wanted, step two. But she also gets the knowledge, which is that she's a good detective. This is what she's made to do. I thought the knowledge would be where the thing was, but it's actually the knowledge about herself. Actually, it's both. It's both that she was right and she found out who done it and where it was hidden, but there's a deeper level that she finds out about herself. That's brilliant. And often um, authors and screenwriters talk about the hero's outer journey and the inner journey. And often the outer journey to get the ring or the golden fleece or the beautiful princess is just a pretense for the hero to learn 
who he is or who she is and what her special talents and gifts are. I think this is a really nice exercise in being observant about story. So you could actually do this with the first chapter of The Thieves of Ostia, because it ends with the sentence, Flavia looked down and her heart skipped a beat. At the foot of the tree were at least half a dozen wild dogs, all staring hungrily up at her. So see if you can find the beats of the next scene. What is Flavia's new problem? What is her desire now? Who is her opponent? What is her plan to get the desire? How does she put her plan into effect? Who does she battle? What does she learn? And does the scene end with Flavia on a higher, happier, or a lower or tragic level? Have a read and see if you can work it out for yourself. 